often referred to as the hidden homeless, families living in motels, maybe with their friends or in shelters. And the latest report by Housing and Urban Development shows Oregon has the fifth highest increase in homeless families in just the last year. Our Chris Holmstrom met with a local family and gives us insight on this crisis. These are families trying to survive. We're talking moms, dads, kids and their pets just getting by day to day. I met a single mother and her son facing life's challenges alone and under some tough circumstances. Good morning, everyone. Friday shine. Valentine's Day is over. It's 6 a.m. I think your eyes are just fine. The start to another busy day for Nova LeVan and her 11 year old son, Kai. Can I cinnamon, bud? Yes, you want your cinnamon roll. Good morning. The shelter has been their home for the past four months. <laughs> I'm moving my bed so that I can get to my cat. Quite honest. Her name is Oz, and she is black and white. We rescued her, so she's basically a rescue cat. There. The Levans are one of many families staying at the Human Solutions Family Shelter in Portland. It's now approaching 7 o'clock. A morning routine that can be hectic for this single mother. Are you done? Yeah. Come on then. It's now 7.15. All right, you ready to walk to the bus stop? Zip up your coat and put your hood on. It's raining. Five minutes later, the bus is here. Kai, give me a kiss. Love you. Have a good day at school. I grew up in the foster care system, aged out of the foster care system, never got adopted. To many, 33-year-old Nova never had a chance. While in foster care, she was sexually abused. At 18, she was on her own and experienced homelessness, prostitution, and drug addiction. And even though she's been sober for nearly 14 years, her past still haunts her. I don't like who I am because of it. Not who I am, but who I have a tendency of being. At 22, she had Kai. Her whole life changed. But with no family support, the two have lived in and out of shelters. The motivation's just not there, you know. It's, it's all part of depression. And people don't know, don't understand how hard that can be. A struggle that Kai also faces. It's a lot of emotional outbursts. He's really sensitive. He cries a lot. And shelter life has not made it easy. In fact, Kai too suffers from depression and anxiety. He also takes medication for attention deficit disorder. Even with the odds against her, Nova is still trying to move forward. I am on my way to an apartment complex to fill out an application for an apartment. Her first housing application since moving back to Portland from Georgia last year. She was recently approved for government funded housing. It's very high anxiety specifically because you do wonder if people are going to look at the letter that you have and go, well, we don't want your type here, you know. But it's worth the risk. We're seeing entire families that, you know, have, have not been homeless before ever. Charles Hodge is the emergency services director for Human Solutions. These are kids that go to the schools with your children. These are families that used to be your neighbors. Estimates by the Department of Housing and Urban Development show in Washington, there are more than 20,000 homeless people. Nearly 7,000 are families. In Oregon, more than 13,000 people. Nearly 30% of them are families, just like Nova and Kai. Hodge blames increased rents, low vacancy rates, and stagnant wages. What needs to be done to put an end to this homeless crisis? So we're going to have to look at things like rent limits, um, where we limit the, the amount of money that landlords are able to increase the rent. Also look at the opportunities to reduce or potentially eliminate things like no, no cause evictions. Hodge worries if changes don't happen, the homeless rates will only go up. Meanwhile, back at the shelter, it's now approaching 2.30.
Nova waits for Kaya to get home and updates us on her apartment search. It's been a while since I applied with housing, but uh, I have to get the proof of income for my son's Social Security and turn that in with the application. Once that's done, the waiting game. <laughs> and hopefully a new start for this family. If I didn't have hope for something better, I would have just left my kid behind and just ran off. <laughs> that's why it's important for me to have hope. Chris Holmstrom, Coin6 News.